California, magnitude 5.3 earthquake at the Gorda Ridge Blanco fracture zone today and aftershock. And it was felt on the west coast. Let's take a look at it because it was big. Here we are at Sizemore Berkeley, and this is the location of it right here. This is the Gorda Escarpment, Gorda Ridge, Blanco Fracture Zone. It's off Eureka and Medford. We usually get a lot of big earthquakes here. This area gives big earthquakes. They have found an underwater volcano in this area right here a couple of years ago, and we have the Axel uh, Seamount around this area, the underwater volcano. And this is what we look like today. This is our activity today. The blue is today's quakes. The red is just the past hour, Searles Valley. And uh, let's see what was felt. The shake map shows that it's been felt Eureka, Medford, California, Oregon area. That's it right here. The shake alert, initial earthquake location, the black dot. The star is the regional network, polygon, predicting outer range for felt ground motion, and it was felt. Red circle is front of peak shaking when the alert was released. Shaking takes 10 seconds to expand from the circle. And uh, it was felt. It was felt up to now by nine people reporting it. And that's the area. Subduction zone, as we know. And this is the historic seismicity, although not everything here is mapped. That's what it looks like. Medford Eureka. And let's go to the uh, aerial, make it a little bit better. Shake map. See, it only goes for a little bit, although it, the, uh, the diagram that we saw before shows it on land, obviously. It would, it would extend this way. And shake map contours. Again, it stops for some odd reason. That's not understandable. I don't understand why they stop it. But anyway, it would have taken 10 seconds to get out there. Shake stations. Yes. And we have, did you feel it? Population density. Here we are. And tectonics and faults. All right, so you can see that it's obviously on the Juan de Fuca plate. And it's one of the worst areas in the world, of course. This is the San Andreas section. Okay, it doesn't want to go out. Okay, okay, here we go. All right, there we go. Uh, you can see a number of faults there, and they're finding new ones all the time. Look at this here. Look at this. Amazing. Let's get it. Let's do away with some of them so that we can see it much better what's going on underneath there. Okay. Take the shape map off. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. Amazing. So we go a little bit lower. Ridge Crest is right there. That's a garlic fault. San Andreas. And should we take a look at what's happening in Canada? Because it's not just the United States that has seismicity, of course. It's also Canada. Okay, we see that. USGS plots our earthquakes, even though it plots, for example, oh, Hawaii's had, wow. OK, 
actually that's 2.7 which is not small and then the other one beside that is again 2.3 all right um yeah why okay the, um, and even though we have like mexico and uh, central america colombia peru we have other uh, earthquakes as, as well plot i don't understand why they don't also plot canada we have to go to the canadian here we are. Hopefully it'll wake up soon enough. I have a lot of tabs open. Here we are. Okay. That's the Canadian uh, earthquakes. And uh, this is the area where we had we have the super volcano. In the video before this one, you saw, we, knew, we saw that we have one here. Although we had other ones at VH, VI 8 and 9 around this area um, where we saw historic supervolcanic eruptions. Canada had one around here, north of Maine. Uh, I don't even know. Uh, I mean, these areas are so close together that uh, how should I know? We don't even know. Uh, because, you know, they could be part of the same system. The same uh, magma body, magma chambers, magma corridors, anyway. So this is, as you know, the extension of the, what's this? This was 3.2, okay, south shore of Lake Erie, all right. Um, this is the extension of the New Madrid Seismic Zone Real Foot Rift Valley, right there. And uh, if you go extending it back this way, it's right here, okay. That way there it goes. So you do have a tremendous amount of activity right there as well, as we have here as well on the San Andreas section right there and it would go up along these islands as well as we saw before okay I think I lost my tab now for the Canadian okay what is that that's something else okay oh that's the volcanic rocks in North America and probable volcanic rocks in North America. These are the known with the red and the probable is in blue. Stretching North Carolina with the East Coast. New Jersey this is stretching into the known is stretching into Pennsylvania. Uh, what is that? Connecticut, somewhere in Connecticut. That's New York State. Something in New York State is probable. And uh, Rhode Island, no, that's uh, Con uh, Connecticut, Boston. And we have here along Maine. Hold on. Okay. Bay of Fundy. All right. All this is known volcanic areas. All along here. That's around the super volcano. It could be the same, you know, it could be the same body. I don't know. We don't know. How should we know? Uh, I haven't really dwelt too much on the Canadian, uh, but it's surprising. Okay, this is our our earthquake details here, with the aftershock of 3.6 about 40 minutes later. Tremendous amount of earthquake activity on the west coast. It seems to be decreasing, but to me, it looks as if it's, oh, look at this, this is, this is Long Valley Caldera. What's happening there? Okay, across Fresno is along that, that's Long Valley Caldera. Mammoth Lakes is Long Valley Caldera. And all oh, this is the Nevada area. This is, of course, the quake swarm from Ridgecrest is causing a jostling of San Andreas and uh, Walker Lane Fault System, and even into Nevada, and even uh, quake swarms in Yellowstone. Okay. So, what is the area of the Blanco Fracture Zone? Juan de Fuca and Gorda Ridge, where we had the 5.3 today in the aftershock, and we've had a lot of activity there this past few weeks. The Blanco Fracture Zone, or the Blanco Transport Fault, Zone B, TFZ, is a right lateral transform fault. 
the transform fault is a plate boundary where the motion is predominantly horizontal. It ends abruptly and is connected to another transform, a spreading ridge or a subduction zone. And it runs northeast of the coast of Oregon in the Pacific Northwest United States, extending from the Gorda Ridge in the south to the Juan de Fuca Ridge in the north. The Blanco transfer form zone, about uh, 350 kilometers long, varies in width between 20 and 75 kilometers and the Blanco fracture zone starts about 150 kilometers off Cape Blanco extending northwest by 500, 500 kilometers off of Newport consisting of a series of deep basin interrupted transform faults. The western part of this from the Cascadia depression to the Juan de Fuca ridge moves at about 1.4 centimeters a year which is pretty big. The eastern segment from the Cascadia Depression to the Gorda Ridge moves about 3.9 centimeters a year. The whole zone average is a slip of 2 centimeters a year, which is pretty big. Through it, the Cascadia Channel passes. The eastern segment, principal feature of the eastern portion, is the Blanco Ridge, 150 kilometers right lateral moving fault responsible for the largest earthquakes in the region. The ridge itself varies between 3.5 and 7 kilometers wide, peaks about 600 and 1,000 meters above the seafloor, and the ridge likely formed through extensive shearing and subsequent serpentization from the intrusion of the seawater. The Gorda Depression is a 10 kilometer wide extension basin connecting the east end of the Blanco Ridge to the Gorda, the Gorda Ridge, and the basin is around 4,400 meters deep in the center. The Cascadia Depression connects two halves of the Blanco Transfer Fault Zone and depression is elongated around 20 kilometers northeast-southwest direction, but only 8 kilometers in the northwest-southeast direction. The sediments line the seafloor of the depression, mostly turbitides. Channels cut through the southern end of the depression Remnants of turbidity, turbidity flows originating from the Missoula floods, but there are also signs of more recent local turbidity currents. Earthquakes. Most large events in the zone occur on the Blanco Ridge, as the motion of this fault accounts for the majority of the plate movement. Strikes of faulting occurring in this region, the motion of the fault is parallel. To the motion of the plate. Tectonic activity in the central part of the zone is weaker and deeper on the Blanco Ridge and typically the activity is consistent with normal faulting. Swarms, January 9, 1994. The large series of swarms of earthquakes occurred on the East Blanco Depression and acoustic signals recorded during these events indicate that an eruption occurred in the zone. Further investigation revealed an active hydrothermal vent the first of its kind to be discovered in a transport fault zone. And in March and April 2008, a swarm of moderate earthquakes occurred both near and within the Blanco zone. The swarm began March 30th when over 600 tremors began occurring north of the zone within the Juan de Fuca plate. And on April 23rd, activity moved to the Blanco fault zone itself near its junction with the Gorda Ridge. Another series of earthquakes occurred June of 2015, spread out over a period of a few days, some reaching magnitude of 5.8. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue 
my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.